Well, we want to welcome everyone to our Friday morning Bible class of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. We say shalom to you all. We are very thankful uh, for those who will be able to be with us for these Bible studies on uh, YouTube and Facebook. And we pray that the Lord will bless uh, His Word as we study together in both in the morning on Friday morning, the book of Ephesians, and of course in Friday evening, the book of Daniel. So let's uh, turn uh, to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll read the verses that are found in Ephesians uh, chapter 1. So let's just pray together, dear brothers and sisters. Uh, so Abba, our Father, we just ask your blessing upon your word. We pray that our time together this morning will be edifying, will be an encouragement to our hearts. We give you thanks and ask this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, Amen. Amen. So let's turn to the book of Ephesians. We are in chapter 1. And uh, I can definitely say, beloved brothers and sisters, that the book of Ephesians is a tremendous uh, letter that the apostle uh, Shaul, his Hebrew name, and his diaspora name is Paul, Polos. He is the one that have given us, that have written this uh, a letter to the Ephesian believers in Ephesus, in Asia Minor. And I would like today to seek to kind of deal with the last portion of Ephesians uh, chapter 1. We have covered really uh, up till verse 17. And uh, here now, from here on, from verse 18 on, the apostle Shaul Paul uh, desire the believers at Ephesus uh, to uh, grow and to to learn to appreciate the blessing that they have been blessed with. To know that they are wealthy, spiritually, they are wealthy. So for the context, I'm reading verse 15 to the end of the chapter. And so Paul, Shaul, is writing in verse 15, and he says in verse 15, Wherefore, Ephesians 1, and verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believed according to the working of his mighty power. He continued, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, in Mashiach, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and that he hath put all things, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And so here we are, beloved brothers and sisters, as we are looking at these verses together. These are the last verses of uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. And so now the apostle, after he began to share with the brethren at Ephesus of the fact that he does not cease, verse 16, number one, to give thanks for them, number two, to mention them in his prayers. Shaul Paul never stopped for a moment to pray for the believers. We found that in our previous meetings together, that he was always 
praying. He was praying for the various saints. He was praying for the saints in Colossae. He was praying for the saints in Corinth. He was praying for the saints in the Romans believers. He was constantly praying for the people of God. So when he's mentioning to them that he's praying for them, the apostle uh, Paul is now continuing in these verses. And these verses are very beautiful verses because in these verses, these are the verses uh, 17, 18, 19, all the way to verse 23, he is really praying that the believers will know four things. Number one, that they will know God. Number two, that they will know not only God, that they will know God's calling. Number three, that they will know God's riches. And number four, that they will know God's power. Four things that he desired the believers at Ephesus to know that he's mentioning really from verse 17 on. After he said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, he continued in verse 17a, and he said that the God of our Lord, Jesus the Messiah, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In other words, you notice, he wanted that God, in the power of the Spirit of God, will give the believers at Ephesus, uh, uh, notice he calls it in verse um, uh, 17, the spirit of wisdom. And we made reference to that. Already we read of the uh, spirit of wisdom in the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah 11, where the prophet Isaiah was speaking to Israel about the future coming of the Messiah to reign and rule over the nation and over all the nations of the world, he spoke about the sevenfold spirit of God which rested upon the person of the Lord Jesus the Messiah. To remind you, we read these verses, but let me just read it one more time, Isaiah 11, and there we read, um, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And you notice that, what we read here. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is the Mashiach, the promised Messiah that will come. Then we read, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit of God will be resting upon the person of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and the same Holy Spirit of God, Paul, is mention, mentioning him to the Ephesians here, that he was praying that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him might be, in other words, that God will give the believers at Ephesus, that uh, the Father of glory will give them that spirit of knowledge in order to, to have an understanding of the person of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Now you notice what we also say, that it will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then he continued in verse 18, and he said that the eyes of your understanding uh, being enlightened. And we mentioned, beloved brothers and sisters, that the eyes of the understanding simply has a reference to the inner man. When you and I became believers, we have now a new nature, and that new nature God wants us to enjoy and to grow spiritually within the inner man. This is so, such a, a very interesting expression uh, mentioned here in this chapter concerning the inner man. Now that inner man simply has a reference to the new birth, to the, to the believer that have the person of the Holy Spirit of God that is now indwelling every person that have come to know the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. And so this is very important. In fact, there are other verses that we can make reference to, but the inner man speaks about the new birth, the new man that you and I now as believers uh, possess. And so that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you may know, and now notice how many times, Beloved brothers and sisters, the apostle uh, used that expression, the, 
uh, in this, the word to know. You notice that? In verse 18, that ye may know. He continue, and then he is using this expression again, to know, and then he used what to know what, what is the hope of your calling? Verse 18a, what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? Verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his might, uh, of his mighty power? Notice he used the word that you may know, and then he's saying, what is the hope of your calling? Verse 18, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And then once again in verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? So the desire of the apostle Paul that the believers at Ephesus, this is you and I as well, might have this knowledge of the person and the work that the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, accomplished on our behalf. Now, if you don't mind, just turn to chapter 3 for a moment. And I want you to notice this expression, the inner man. It's mentioned again here. Notice what it says in verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Notice again, in the inner man. Notice this expression. What does that mean, the inner man? You see, we have the outward man and the inner man. The outward man has a reference to the, the, the nature that we have, the old sinful nature. The inner man has a reference really to the new birth that we have, the new life that we have. I can make some other references to this uh, just to show you this in a few other verses here. If you turn to Romans chapter 2 and verse 29, Romans 2, and there the apostle Paul writing to the Romans, and he said, notice what he says, Romans 2 verse 29, he's speaking to two Jewish people, one who is unbeliever, a Jewish unbeliever, and one who is Jewish but a believer. And he said to them, or he's saying to the unbeliever Jewish individual, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is one is, is of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. In other words, if you just go back to verse 28, same, Romans 2, 28, for he is not a Jew which one which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one which is inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. You see, he's 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 instructing a a, a Jewish person who might come and say, Listen, I'm I'm Jewish, I've been circumcised, but Shaul Paul said, yes, you are. But the true Jewish person is not only outwardly, but also inwardly. And what happened to each person who became a believer in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, we have now new nature. And therefore, we have an inner man. The inner man has a reference to the new birth, to that which is of God. You notice the scripture oftentimes called it, uh, make a distinction between the old nature, which is the flesh, the outward man, 2 Corinthians 4, 16, the old man, Colossians 3 and verse 9, the natural man, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, and the human nature, Ephesians 2, verse Three, but you see, the inner man has to do with which is with that which is uh, the new nature, the divine nature, the spiritual man. Second Corinthians two fifteen, the divine nature that one has. Second Peter one verse fourteen, and so on, and Colossians and other passages that speaks about the inner man in contrast 
to the outward man. So we have to distinguish between the flesh and the spirit, the outward man and the inner man. The old man and the new man, the natural man and the spiritual man, the human nature and the divine nature. This is very, very important lesson to learn. In Hebrew, we call the flesh basar and the spirit ruach. And therefore, the scripture is very clear to help us to distinguish uh, between the believer and the unbeliever. The believer has only uh, it has two natures, the unbeliever has one. And of course, I know that there is many discussion over this issue, but we can see from Scripture that the, 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 the Spirit of God helps us to kind of distinguish the difference between an unbeliever and believer. And that's why if we are going back to uh, our chapter, and we already said that Apostle Shaul Paul desired the believers in Corinth to know these four truths, very important truths to understand in their life. And he wants you and I to know that as well, because oftentimes, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, we, as, as, because we are here on earth, are, we are so shallow in our walk with the Lord, as we often have to confess this. We are so, you might say, yes, we are believers, we belong to the Lord, we are saved, we are forgiven, we have been justified, we have been uh, reconciled to God, we have been saved, we are forgiven. All these truths belong to us. But we are so shallow in entering into that which we possess because of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. And because of what He has done for us, we have been blessed in so many ways, beloved uh, brothers and sisters. And this is exactly what the Apostle Paul desired the Ephesians to understand. So, and I'm just, just kind of re um, repeating a little bit, and I apologize for that, but I think it is very important for us to understand it. These four points are mentioned here that the Apostle Shaul Paul is desiring the believers who are who are who belong to the Lord to to be enlightened that the the eyes of their understanding being enlightened by the Lord to understand what uh, what they have in Christ in the Messiah. So these are the four points that I want now to go through with you. Number one, of course, is verse 17 again. 17b, he praying that they might know God. In our previous meeting together, we did say that the atheist says there is no God. Psalm 14, 1, the fool says in his heart, no God. Ain Elohim. I don't believe in God. There is no God. This is the atheist. The agnostic says, since there is no God, therefore we cannot know God. If there is no God, we cannot know God. All what we know is that which is here and now in the flesh. But the believer says, oh yes, there is a God. And not only that there is a God, we can know him. There is a God. And we also can know him. We are not atheists, unbelievers. We believe that there is a God. And there is one God. Also, we believe that we can know him because he desires us to know him. He revealed himself to us in the person of our Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. He also revealed himself to us through creation, and also through conscience. Let me read you one verse in the Psalm, Psalm 19. Listen to this verse, very interesting verse. Psalm 19 and verse 1 tells us, notice that, the heavens declare the glory of God. You don't need to look too far. Just raise your eyes to heaven 
and you can see that the heavens declare that there is a God and God is has glory. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is a God, and God revealed himself through creation. Creation is that which God has revealed himself, but not only through creation, God revealed himself also to us through the conscience that he had given to us. Now turn with me to Romans, please, to Romans chapter 1. Listen to these verses in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. And I'm reading these verses, Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. Listen to what Paul said. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest to them. Creation showed that there is a living God. They should have acknowledged him. All humanity should recognize that there is a living God that we are accountable to. But notice what we read in verse 19. This, the, 18 and 19, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men that hold the, the truth that he knows, but hold it in an unjust and unrighteous way. And so because that which may be known of God is manifest unto men, <clears throat> unto them, for God has showed this unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Creation prove that there is a God. Even the eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because when they knew God, notice that, beloved brothers and sisters, they glorified him not as God. Notice that they knew God because they saw it in creation. And men know God because they have a conscience. And you notice he continue, and he's saying to them that man is guilty because they know God outwardly, they can see him because of creation, and they also know that there is a living God in, in their conscience. And yet they deny God. That's atheist. The agnostic says, no, no, there is not only there is no God, but we cannot know him. But the believer in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the true redeemed person, he says, yes, there is a God who loves me, who gave himself for me, who provided the Mashiach for me who created all things by him. All things were made, and without him nothing was made which was made. And the very same God who created all things, he loved me, and I can know him because he wants us to have enjoyment of his person, have a relationship with him. That's why Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, paid for our sins when he died for us on the tree. And so these Ephesians, they now became believers. They, come to, they came to know the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, as their Lord and Savior. So Paul wanted them to understand the blessings and the, the riches that they possess because of the finished work of Yeshua the Messiah on the cross on their behalf. So he wanted them to know, number one, he wanted that you might know God. Let me repeat this, verse 17a. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge, here's the word to know, in the knowledge of Him. Who is the Him? This is the person of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, they already knew him in a sense that they knew him by faith. And they have accepted him as their Lord 
and their Messiah, their Savior. But that is with respect to their eternal position and eternal uh, riches that they will have once they have left this scene. Yours and mine as well. But Paul wanted even more. What will happen until we get to glory? See, we only have a certain time to live here in this world. Some of us will live here till 90, 100, 110, 120, like Moshe, Moshe, Moses, the, the servant of the Lord, lived for 120 years. You know, we have a custom in Israel that when we wish to, to each other to live a long life, we always said, Ad mea ve'esrim. Until 120. Why? Because Moshe lived for that long life. But we might not live, we may not live 120 years. We might live much less. But what happened with the short time that the Lord had given us here? Some of us became believers when we were 10, 20, 15, some were, we were older. We have a certain time in our life here on this earth. What are we going to do? Are we going to say, well, I am a believer and now I will carry on to live my life? Just, uh, you know, my, 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 my ticket, my salvation is secure and therefore I will carry on to live my life neglecting to learn more of the person of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah? Of course not. And that's why Paul said that he may know him. He already said to them that they have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies already in the first few verses of our chapter, but now he's going beyond it. And he says, I really pray for you, brothers and sisters in Ephesus, that you may have the knowledge of him, that the father of glory, that the God of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, to know Him more. You remember what Paul said elsewhere? Oh, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection, Paul said. He wanted to know more and more and more of the person of the Lord because we can never exhaust the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, it is so precious to learn more about the person of the Lord. Look at the Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Listen to this beautiful verse. Paul said, <clears throat> he said in verse 10 of Philippians chapter 3, that I may know him. And you and I might ask, hey, Shaul, Paul, <laughs> don't you know him? You have seen, you have seen the glorified Messiah in the vision that you receive on the way to Damascus. You have received already an enlightenment concerning the truth of the assembly, the church, the ecclesia. What do you need to know more of him? You know so much already. But you know, the more we know about the Lord Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, the more we are overwhelmed with who he is, his beauty, his grace, his love for us, the fact that he have done, was willing to do all that for us. He is that great I am. I am the bread of life. He said of himself, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. And we can just go on in all what we have studied in the Gospel of Yohanan. He is the great I am who became a man, Ben Adam, the son of man. He is the Mashiach, the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world. He is the one that is both for the church. He is the head of the church, but he is also the Messiah of Israel. He is the King of kings. He is Lord of lords. And Paul wants us, and he praying to the Father, that the Father of glory, to the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, that he will give the believers the knowledge, the revelation in the knowledge of him. You know, brothers and sisters, 
This is the privilege that we all have and also the responsibility that in our lives we might, we might build each other up as we receive additional revelation from the Lord through his word concerning the person of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, so we can be a blessing to each other and build each other up and encourage the saints, encourage the people of God, beloved brothers and sisters. So that is where the Apostle Paul is now a, 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 a desiring the believers at Ephesus a, to have these four things. The first thing is to know God, to know a, in Hebrew it says Ladat, Ladat, not only to know about the Messiah, but to know the Messiah and to know him experientially, to know him uh, in, a, in a way that we live our life and to enjoy him and to have a relationship with him, to have fellowship with him and to walk with him here in this world. But you notice that Shaul Paul continues. And in the next verse, notice we are moving along to the next verse. In the next verse, the Apostle Paul says in verse 18a, not only that he prayed that they might know him, but also that they might know the calling, God's calling for them. Notice that I'm reading verse 18a, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know, here's the word again, ye may know what is the hope of your calling. What does he mean when he says to know what is the hope of your calling? Do you know that you and I are called people? You know the word church in the, in the Greek is ekklesia. And it comes from the word called out once. You and I, Jewish believers and non-Jewish believers, we have been called out people. In fact, in Acts 15, the apostle James reminded the assembly in Jerusalem that the God is in this present day calling out from among the Gentiles a people for himself, called out of this country and of that nation and of this group of people, called out to be belong to the Lord Jesus the Messiah. It's the same thing with the Jewish people today. God is calling out from among the, our own nation, Israel, elected people according to the election of grace, Romans 11 and verse 5. And so Jews and Gentiles who are united in the Mashiach, in Christ, are called out people. Our hopes are, is in heaven. Our blessings are heavenlies. Our possession are eternal in God's presence. There are spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ, in Mashiach. And therefore, we are called out people. Let me just remind you that when Yeshua asked the disciples in, the, in, the, in, the, in Philippi, uh, he asked them, uh, the, what do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And everyone gave you an answer. And then Simon Peter said to him, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And what did the Lord Yeshua answer Peter? He said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, the testimony, Peter, that you have gave, you given, I will build my assembly, my church, my ecclesia, my called out ones. And therefore, beloved brothers and sisters, you and I are called people. We are called out. We are called to know the Lord, to have a relationship with him. And so in verse 18, we learn that we are a called people. And Apostle Paul warned the believers to know the, as it says here in verse 15, 18b, what is to know what is the hope of your calling? Now, if you go back to Galatians chapter 1, and there the Apostle Paul spoke of himself. And he said of himself in verse 1, But when it pleased God, 
who separated me from my mother's womb and called me, notice that, by his grace. Paul, Shaul, was called by God's grace. You and I are called by God's grace to be part of the family of God, beloved brothers and sisters. We are called people. We are called out. Notice in 1 Peter chapter 2, if you turn there for a moment, in verse 9, Peter said, to whom he wrote, to the early believers to whom he wrote in 1 Peter 2, in verse 9, he said to the believers, in the context of 1 Peter, he's calling, he's speaking about the Jewish believers. But that's applied to all of us, Jews and Gentiles who became believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, who are part of the church, part of the assembly, but ye are chosen generation. You are royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him. Listen to this who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Beloved brothers and sisters, we were all in darkness. We were darkness. But God have called us out of darkness. We were blind. We are sinners by nature. We were doomed to eternal separation from God. But God has called us out of darkness. He has called us, as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, that he has called us out of darkness. He is mentioning here in this verse, and why? In order that, as it's mentioned here in this very interesting verse, out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are now belong to him. We are light because of who the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, is. So we have been called by his grace. We have been called out of darkness. Notice in chapter 4 of Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, there notice what he says again using the word calling. Calling. In Ephesians 4, he said, There is one body, and one spirit, even as ye are called, once again, in one hope of his calling. There is one hope of God's calling. He called us. We belong to him. Oh yes, we live here in this world. We have to deal with all the issues of life. But we are called from above. We are called by God. We are called out of darkness. We are called by His grace. And we have the hope of our calling to be with Him for time and eternity. One more verse in 1 Peter chapter 5 again. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and there in verse 10, Peter continue to tell the believers, as Paul mentioned to the Ephesians, Peter is mentioning to the believers, the, the Jewish believers in his context, and he says to them, he says to them, notice in verse 10, 1 Peter 5, 10, by the God of all grace, who has called us, here it is again, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, and make you perfect, and establish you, and he will settle you. God called us, as it says here, he, a God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory. Do you know, brothers and sisters, we belong to the Lord eternally. The calling that God has called us is not temporary. It's not only for a short time. That's why... You know, this verse, he called us in, uh, unto his eternal glory. It shows us that our salvation is secure. It's not a temporary salvation. If it is eternal, you cannot lose it. When we fail, and we do, our salvation is secure not because of our performance, but our salvation is secure because the Messiah paid for our sin 
and sins. We belong to him. And our salvation is eternal. Our calling is eternal, as we have here in this passage. So, again, back to our Ephesian passage, the beloved brothers and sisters. Let's see if we can finish this chapter now, and it might be a lot to say. So we learn that in verse 17b, God's people in the Ephesian believers were were a, a, a call to know God. In verse 17b, in verse 18a, they were Paul praying for them that they will not only know God, but they will know God's calling. They will understand the relationship that they have been brought into. Don't forget to understand that you were called by grace. You were called out of darkness. You were having a hope of your calling. You are called for glory. You belong to the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, you belong to heaven. Now, thirdly, the third thing that you want them to know is that they will know not only God, not only God's calling, but to also know God's riches. God's riches. And that's what we read in the second half of verse 18. He continues and he says, after he says, that the eye of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of your calling. And then he continued there. And, that you may know, and what is, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, this is also so precious. You know, when you think of, his, of inheritance, you think of something that you receive. And indeed, we read in 1 Peter 1 that we have an inheritance that it is undefiled and reserved for us in heaven. You remember the 1 Peter 1 where it says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto the obedience of the and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and so on. And then he said to them in verse 4, that you, in other words, you have been elected in order that you will have an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away and reserve in heaven for you. But here, beloved brothers and sisters, in Ephesians 1, 18b, is not so much our inheritance that we will receive once we will go to glory, some of it we have already enjoyed now. But in this verse, it is not so much our inheritance, but God's inheritance in us. Can you imagine that God find pleasure in having us believers because of his beloved son, the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, because of what the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, has done. Now, notice this, and I'm reading verse 18 once again, the second part, and to know what the riches of the glory of his, notice, inheritance in the saints. So the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord Yeshua, he has his own inheritance and he finds it in the saints, in you and I. So the, the truth that we learn here, that it's not only that God called us, not only that God wants us to know him, to know the Messiah, to know Yeshua, Jesus, and that to know the riches uh, uh, that he have called us and to know the, the, the fact that we have been called from darkness to light, we have been called by his grace, we have been called for glory, but to also know, beloved brothers and sisters, that you and I are the Lord's inheritance. I mean, I cannot, I can never think of myself, I am an inheritance of the Lord, what he found in us. You an inheritance of the Lord, what he found in you. What he found in me, what he found in us. But beloved brothers and sisters, you see, God wanted many sons like unto his son. He wanted to bring many sons to glory. 
God the Father loved his son so much that he wants many sons like him. Now again, it's not that a believer become divine, God forbid. But what happened is that we are like him in a sense that because of him, God sees us through the glasses of his son. When he look at you and I, he sees us in Christ, in the Messiah, in Mashiach, in Christ. That's why the thought that we have here throughout the whole chapter here is that everything that we enjoy and possess, every blessing that we have is only because it is in Christ, in the Messiah. Notice what we read in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, in the Messiah. Verse 4, according he has chosen us in him. It's all in the Messiah, in Christ, in him. We can go down the line and we can see this. All, all is found because of him. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, in Mashiach. Everything is in him. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in Messiah. And you can go, verse 13, in whom we have redemption, or in whom ye also trusted. In other words, everything is found in it because of the person of, the, of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. So now, you and I, because of what the Lord have done for us, we are now, according to verse 18b, we are the riches of the glory of God his inheritance in the saints. And once again, the word saint is mentioned here. The word saint here simply means mekudash, set apart. We are positionally set apart for God, even though in our lives here below, we still stumble and fall, a time sin, and need to repent of it and be restored to the Lord. But we are called saints and we became the those that belong to the Lord Jesus, their inheritance that belong uh, to him. So that uh, Paul prays that the believers at Ephesus might know his grace and the riches of his grace. And it is, notice that it is the all because of him and that which belong to him. Uh, one more verse in Ephesians 1 and verse 6. Notice again, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in Christ, in the Messiah, who is called the beloved. So brothers and sisters, we have covered thus far, verse 17b, Paul prayed that we might know God. Secondly, we have covered verse 18a. Paul prayed that we might know God's calling. Thirdly, beloved brothers and sisters, Paul prayed in verse 18b that we might know God's riches. And now fourthly, Paul continue in his prayer or sharing in his prayer the desire in his prayer that we might know also God's power. And that takes us from verse 19 all the way to the end of the chapter. Let me read these verses. In verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 1, we read, And what? And what? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To us words, who believed according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, in the Messiah, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that, and every name that is named, not only in this world, 
but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, to the assembly, to the called out ones, to the kehila, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, in these verses 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, the Apostle Paul prayed to God, and he prays that the Ephesians, he prays for you and I, that we not only know God, not only know God's calling, not only know God's riches, but also to know God's power. And in order to know God's power, in our lives here and now, Paul is really challenging the believers. He is, our faith, the faith of the people of God will be challenged. You notice that in our lives as believers, we will be tested. We will be tried. And our faith in the Lord will be tested. A time we will fail. A time we will stumble. As I mentioned, we still have this sin nature in us and we stumble here. But nevertheless, the Lord will test us in our lives here on earth. And that's what Paul desires, that experience, in experience, that they are in experience, that the believers will enjoy uh, in their experience in their life to have this understanding of the power of God in their lives. And the power of God does not speak only about an external magic, but it is an internal walk with the Lord. And notice what he's telling them. And I'm reading, verse, notice verse 19, 20, 21. Notice, in verse 19, he used the word power, dynamite. In the Greek, it's a dynamite. dynamite. It's, it's like dynamite in the English. Notice what he says in verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Uh, in Greek, it's D-U-N-A-M-I-S. It is what we use for the word dynamite. Power. This is spiritual power in our walk with the Lord. It is a, a, a power of walking with the Lord in the light of the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. That, the, that what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us, word, who believe, and again, according to the, again, the working, here's the word working. Here it's come uh, for, the, for the, the Greek word energia, for the word energy. The word energy is like, you know, when you have a plug and you, you want to have energy to light something, you have to have energy. The believer, if the believer will be energized to walk with the Lord in a world that resists so much the things of the Lord, we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit of God. He is our energy. He is the power. That's why we are called to walk in the Spirit in order not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if we walk in the flesh, we cannot have this energia, energy, to go ahead and to grow spiritually and to continue on to follow after the Lord. So the Apostle Paul is, is desiring and he's praying that the believers in Ephesus will not only know God, not only know God's calling, not only know God's riches, but also know God's power in their lives. You remember there is a song sometimes we sing, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a shadow He laid on our way. I not remember all the words, but when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, the Spirit of God guide us. Yeshua said in John 14, 15, and 16 that he will send the Paracletos. He will guide you into all truth. He will lead you. He will instruct you. He will, you, you, will, you will be guided by him 
you will walk in the light of the power of the Spirit of God in your life. Why so many times we are shallow and our walk with the Lord is very weak and oftentimes we drift away from the Lord. Why? Is because we oftentimes do not walk in the light of the power of the Holy Spirit of God in our life. And so Paul in verse 19 said, What is the exceeding greatness of his power? To us, word who believe according to the working of his power, of his mighty power. In other words, it has to be not only that we were saved by the power of the Spirit of God, we are to actually know the power of the Spirit of God to be evident in the life of a person. This is so wonderful. When you see a brother or a sister uh, walking with the Lord, you say, you know in your heart, this brother, this sister, they are in the Word. They are occupied with Yeshua, with the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. They are guided by the Holy Spirit of God. They are walking in the light of His Word. Then notice what it says in verse 20. The power of his resurrection. It said, the, which he had wrought in, uh, in, wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. In other words, it's not only to know the power of the Spirit of God that guided us, but the power of his resurrection. You notice that he said that he wrought in Christ. This is God wrought in Christ when He, in the power of the Spirit of God, raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. You see, that's why Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Resurrection life. This is fascinating. This is what Paul is praying for the believers here. Look at the next verse, verses uh, 21. Not only to know, to have the to, 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 to walk in light of the power of the Spirit of God, which is the power of resurrection, verse 20, but also the power to stand against enemies that are constantly opposing the things of the Lord. Verse 21. Notice, above all principalities, and here's the word, and power, and might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Notice the word principalities, and power, and might. This is a, a satanic, a, the rulers of this world, this angelic, you might say, satanic power that is opposing the people of God, seeking to hinder the believers from spiritual growth. When we will arrive to chapter 6, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 will tell the brothers and sisters in verses uh, uh, 10 on, Brethren, finally brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Then he will tell them in verse uh, uh, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, the moment we became believers, and I will have to close with this for today. We'll touch the last verses and we'll include it in the, sec in the second chapter. The moment that you and I became believers in the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, Satan constantly opposed us. 2 Corinthians calls him the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4. And uh, he is he's the, the God of this world. In chapter 11, he's coming as an angel of light, seeking to beguile God's people. In 1 Peter, Peter called him also. He says that, uh, that he's shooting these darts against God's people where he said uh, to them that he's coming as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So Paul, Shaul, is praying that the believers will know God, will also know God's uh, 
calling will know God's riches, but also experientially will know God's power in their lives. And that's an area that we need God's grace in the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of attacks of the enemy, in the midst of opposition, in the midst of hindrances, in the midst of weakness of the old nature that we have, the world around us. Satan is attacking. The world influences us. The flesh is weak and, 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 and often uh, um, hinder us. In the midst of all these, Shaul Paul is praying that you may know what is, and he continues and he tells them in these verses, to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in the Messiah when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, I will have to stop here with this because uh, we have gone over time for this ministry meeting. But how wonderful to know that Paul, Shaul, praying for the Ephesians as he would pray for any assembly uh, because the desire is that God's people will know uh, God's God, to know God's calling, to, go, to know God's uh, riches and also to know God's power. May the Lord help us uh, in this for each and every one of us as believers in the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. So with this, I will close for today's meeting. I will, we will just close in prayer and uh, uh, turn off the live sessions. And, and then after that, we, those of us that are on, on Zoom, please remain so we can have some questions and answer a uh, period. Let's pray. Abba Father, thank you uh, for uh, the desire that all of us will know God, will know Thee, will know the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, even more as believers. To also know the, our calling, uh, to know the fact that You have called us, uh, also to know the riches that You have provided for us in the Messiah, the wealth, the spiritual wealth You have provided for us but also, Abba Father, to know the, the power uh, that Thou would provide for us to live our life here, especially when there are so much against us. So we thank You so much for Your Word. Bless Your Word, we pray, for we ask it in Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we'll say shalom to all of you there, and we will... Uh, uh, see you, Lord willing, on our next meeting together. God bless you, and shalom, shalom. Shalom.